Yep, we don't like those messages being flashed up there. What's up, everybody? Got a 2018 Toyota Corolla. This one here is an auction special. Uh, does have a little bit of front end damage that's been repaired on it. And the customer complaint is well, all the lots are on, on the dash. Pretty much every one of them. Um, just did like a pre-scan and pretty much every module had tons and tons of codes in it. Uh, most of them history, so uh, I just did kind of like a quick clear all, you know, and rescan re everything to kind of see what's current right now, what's happened. And here we have a few things. Let's get this up here where y'all can kind of see. All right, first off, engine control modules as it can't talk to the brake system control module. Okay. Same with the TCM. But the brakes says they can't talk to the ECM. That's pretty strange. One says it can't talk to the other. Another says it can't talk to the other. But they both can talk to the scan tool. So it's pretty interesting. Um, there's a few other codes in here that I think is probably related. Like document classification, system malfunction. Uh, but if you get down here to like the camera, the camera says it can't talk to the bike or the brake module also. Um, let's see. Same with the instrument cluster, it can't talk. Uh, lane keep assist says it can't talk to the brake system. So we've got a lot of these modules pointing towards the brake system control module. Um, occupant classification ECU battery positive line open. So this might be a, a separate concern. We'll uh, address it also. And until I've cleared the codes, monitors haven't ran. So how can we have one module that all these other modules say it can't talk to it, but yet it's talking to the scan tool and telling the scan tool, hey, I can't talk to this other module. I think we're going to need a wiring diagram to see how how this thing talks, what, what CAN bus lines it's on, uh, and see if we can't figure out where we need to go with this. So let me get a wiring diagram and uh, see what we can find. Well, here it is, the entire network diagram printed out. And essentially what's happening is the ECM is saying it can't talk to the uh, brake module and the brake module is saying it can't talk to the ECM. They only really connect here in this junction connector, but yet both of them travel the same wires to this other junction connector that go up to the data link. And from the data link, I can obviously talk to both of them. So, there's only one communication line from each module to the DLC so how can I talk to both of them, but then they can't say they, they say they can't talk to each other. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, so kind of looking over the, uh, uh, the pre-scan again. And of course right here, engine lost calm with brakes and brakes lost calm with ECM. We also have the steering angle sensor power source code. And further down, we've got a code 
for the lane keep assist with the steering angle as well. Uh, so, what I kind of thinking I want to do is I want to just verify the steering angle sensor thing first. Just want to make sure that it's fine. So what I'm going to do is look at the data in the ABS module, see if I have any steering angle sensor data, uh, and then I'm just going to quickly check the powers and grounds to the steering angle sensor. Seems like a pretty easy check. So I'm just going to rule that out, knock that, like get that done with, um, and verify that that's fine or not, and then kind of work through this other stuff that we're seeing okay so here's a little diagram of the steering angle sensor to the brake module and as you can see it's got one ground two power sources a battery and ignition and then it's just got can lines from the steering angle to the brake module and keep in mind these this has to go through all that other stuff that the ECM has to go through so if this can talk to this we should see steering angle change with the steering wheel and right here we've got steering angle is nine percent if i turn the wheel look at that so the brake obviously can talk on data it's obviously getting data um so is the steering angle sensor really not getting one of these power feeds and sending that message to the brake module. That's what I want to check. I want to know, is the actual steering angle sensor got power and ground and is it actually sending that message to the brake module? So it is up in this cover somewhere so i gotta pull that down and then we can get in there and do our power and ground checks okay so right here we've got our steering angle sensor and uh this brown wire right here is pin one which is our ground wire then these two are our can high wire can low wire um the white wires are low this baby blue colored one is the high and then pin four is ignition and pin five is the battery power feed so if we just back probe this in here and i've got the ignition key on and try to get this in here where you can see so there you can see got on pin four, I've got test light, and pin five, look at that, we've got nothing. Nothing on pin five. So, the steering angle sensor is sending the correct signal, or code, to the brake module. It's saying, I don't have power here. So, let's pull up the diagram and figure out where that gets its power feed from. Okay, I printed off the aftermarket diagram for the ABS or the brake module stuff. And here is our steering angle sensor. Okay. And we've got a problem with this pin number five, this battery gray wire, which if we follow up, comes up to the driver side junction block assembly but it just kind of goes in, connects to a couple other things, and comes out over here. And then here's our fuse, ECU B2, seven and a half amp. And it says it's in the um, engine room relay block left side. So that was under here. And if we look at it, ECU B2, seven and a half amp. Well, it's, it's supposed to be there. It's not there. <laughs> oh, auction cars. You gotta love them. Sometimes it's just missing fuses. Um, 
<laughs> I don't know if that's all that's wrong with this car or not, but let's get a fuse, put the fuse in this thing, and just see what happens, okay? So, got us a fuse. We're gonna pop that in there. I know it's not the correct one, but eh, it works. The crazy thing is, is where this jumps through and comes back out, it actually also goes to the to the cluster, which is kind of strange. So, did we have some cluster codes too that would kind of point to this? I don't remember. But we got that put in there. Let's see if uh, we can just do like a rescan of everything, clear everything, and see what happens. Look, the one code went away by itself. I have not cleared codes. It just went away by itself. We still have that code, though, for some reason. So let's do a whole scan again. And I probably might do a whole scan, clear them all, and kind of rescan it again, see if some of this stuff clears up or not. Some of these codes might not clear. So this code was well, says current before, and it's gone to just history now. So that fuse apparently fed something for the occupant classification uh, also. So let's clear all this. Okay, so I went through and cleared the codes, started the car, and it seems like everything has cleared that calm issue code except for the lane keep the pre-collision uh, is the only two modules saying it, it has a malfunction with the brake system it's not a calm code it just says it's got a malfunction but all the modules that had the lost calm code have cleared but this code still remains the engine control system communication circuit fault. And just pulling this code up on all data, it basically kind of say, says that this is happens like if there's a mismatch in computers, like if it's got the wrong ECM put in it, or there's an issue with the, with the skid control, which is the brake module. And I mean, it kind of basically just says to check the ECM part number. If it's proper, you know, it's fine. Uh, was it replaced before the DCC? If the ECM was not replaced, everything is okay, and you need to go continue to A. But, like, if the part number was wrong, you know, put an ECM in it. Um, and then down here, if the part number is correct... Um, I mean, it kind of just, you know, check to make sure the brake module is correct. So, is, is the proper skid module or skid control installed? So, it's basically wanting you to check the part numbers of each one of them. And if it is, continue to A again. Reconfirm DTC. It's the same output. Like, it's the same DT's output. Um, basically, like, it just comes down to putting a brake module in it, putting an ECM in it. So, that's, that's kind of strange. Like, hmm. So, this code is basically telling me that there's a wrong part or the brake module is just bad, kind of. I don't like codes like this. <laughs> I prefer codes where you could check things. Um, I mean, I guess you can just check part numbers. So, I might have to wait until the Toyota dealership is open and I can give them these part numbers and see if they're correct or not. Um, I don't know if I can look online maybe and, and find the part numbers and, and compare them. So, 
Let me do some part number research and get back to you. So I don't really know if this was in a collision or if they're just trying to touch up the paint on the hood or not. Um, this whole front end does look like it's been painted just from the orange peel and trash in it. But really, the structure looks fine. I don't, I don't really see anything that would make me think it's been in a hard wreck. But here's our brake controller, and it's definitely dirty. So it looks like it's the original one. Doesn't look like it's been changed. The harness all looks good to it. I don't see anything cut or broke. The ECM is over here. And same thing, it's got some dirt on it where it's obviously been in here for a while. So I don't think either one of these have been changed, but I guess I'll get part numbers off of them. Uh oh, I might have been wrong. This thing is loose. I'm not sure like if this is where this is really supposed to be or not, but the bolt that is down there on the very bottom, it is loose. So it's letting this thing wiggle a pretty good bit. So it's looking like the ECM might have actually been replaced or taken out for some reason. Um, okay so now let's really look at this thing and see what's going on okay so reading through the code stuff about the c1203 here it says like if the skid uh, control module which is the brake module has been replaced you need to perform this zero point calibration so if we click on that it kind of tells us what we need to do um so it's basically turn it off, center the wheels, apply the parking brake. So parking brake, uh, shifter and P, and then connect tech stream, which we're going to try to do with a snap on here. Turn the ignition on, turn tech stream on, go to the EC or the ABS module, and we're going to go do a uh, reset memory. So let's just cycle the key. Okay. And I, I want to try this because I've got these negative numbers here. And I, I don't really particularly like that. So I want to see if this resets and goes to zero. So functional test. Come on. And then we're going to do a uh, reset memory. So we're looking for the ABS light to flash fast. Um, that's definitely flashing fast. Test mode in progress. Calibration is completed when ABS and or VSC lamp flat flash fast. Wait two minutes. So that's flashing fast, but we've also got this timer. So we're gonna wait the two minutes. Okay, I come up and said we'd finished. And then it's just, I just clicked okay or continue. Now it's telling me to turn the ignition off. And it's gonna want me to crank the engine again, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick all this back together real fast. Okay, got that put back together. Let's continue on here. Let's start the car. Okay, and I guess we're done. Look at that. No lights. Wow. <laughs> Ain't that cool. Uh, 
That is, that is pretty cool. Let's uh, let's do a code scan. Um, let's see. No codes. Isn't that crazy? This thing had every light on the dash on and tons of codes. They come down to one fuse missing and needing to do a zero point calibration. <laughs> Ain't that something? Um, sometimes when you get these auction cars, you just you just never know what you're gonna find. But uh, that's a that makes, that's a fun one. This is basically a, a, as Ivan likes to say, a no parts required. We needed one fuse because somebody stole it or whatever. But uh, yeah, this this is a pretty pretty fun one, pretty cool. So uh, we're gonna button everything back together and uh, get this thing back to to the owner. So see you guys later. As a little bonus, our, uh, these right here that was like negative 18, yep, zero now. The zero point here still stayed the same at, at two, negative two, but these others did clear to zero, so. So I think that was part of the problem. Maybe somebody at some point attempted to do a zero calibration and things wasn't right or somehow just got off. I don't know, but the car's fixed. So, <laughs> whatever. So, also, this thing does have ADOS. There's camera. There's a radar in behind here. Um, since this thing's had some paint work done to it, and clearly things are not bolted on, correctly sending him to the the dealership to make sure this thing is calibrated he's obviously got to tighten up that bumper uh get that right and send this to the dealer to have them redo all the calibrations make sure everything's perfect with ados only because i just i don't have this stuff to do it one day hopefully but uh yeah so Thanks for watching, everybody.